Ferns and Plymouth Pebble Art. Have uh, Yeah, at North Hennessy Tour. And um, it's quite good. Uh, and, you know, congratulations to Kenzie H. Because we found it and we, we couldn't pass it by without picking it up and documenting it. So we're here on North Tennessee, no, no, not Tennessee. <laughs> we're up on North Hennessy Tour, overlooking Princetown, and I thought this was a great place to tell you another Dartmoor Legends. <laughs> don't cringe. I was trying to hold back a laugh. A long time ago, I don't know exactly how long ago, but there was a woman walking home between Prince Town and Two Bridges. She had nearly reached the bridge that crosses the Blackerbrook when a funny little man leapt out of the hedge in front of her and started dancing. The woman was quite alarmed by this. She didn't know whether to carry on or to turn around, but she decided that she would continue on her route. Fearing, however, that she might be pixie-led or enticed off of the correct path and lose her sense of direction, she adopted a classic charm against the pixies, which was untucking her pockets. Proves that she ain't got no money worth nicking or something. Yeah, that's an that, impression. Is that what pixies are? Just muggers? What we now call chavs. She walked onto the bridge, despite the fact that the pixie was still in front of her. Quickly, she reached down, she grabbed the little fella, and she stuck it into her basket. She latched the basket up. She carried on walking, and the pixie was inside, gibbering this mad, crazy language that she couldn't understand. She refused to let this scare her, and she carried on walking home briskly. Eventually, the talking ceased. And when she slowly opened the basket to look inside, the pixie had gone f***ed off somewhere. She walked home, completely baffled, but proud to have actually found and captured a pixie. Not that she could bring it to anyone, because it's gone f***ed off, isn't he? Yeah, it's just talking crap. It's not much of a legend. Well, they're all a bit like that, aren't they? Is that's, that, that's a story. Is that it? Yeah, it's called The Woman Who Caught a Pixie Near Princetown. The Woman Who Made Up a Story About Catching a Pixie Near It's all Princeton. in here, John Pegg's After Dark on Dartmoor. Collected legends and tales. Well, you don't have to believe me. I'm not saying it's true, I'm just, it's a legend. Well, I know, but you obviously felt it was worth reading that out. It just associated to Princetown, and we're at Princetown, you know? It's I think in the time that it took you to read that, I could have written something better. Yeah, but they won't know how long it took me, I'll edit it. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There we go, we're leaving North Hennessy Tour. And I was meant to say something else up there. I don't know if you read Country Walking Magazine or not. Apparently the second best-selling walking publication after Trail Magazine. Well, I thought it was a good magazine, so I thought I'd subscribe to this. I wrote a letter in, tell them how I loved walking, mentioned Summit or nothing, sent them in a selection of photos, and uh, what went and happened, Nate? They only went and published the letter, didn't they? They didn't just publish the letter. We got letter of the month. I've won a pair of 160 pound Berghaus boots. So yeah, chuffed a bit. But not only that, we got a plug for something or nothing. Yep. One of Nafe's photos got published. It made my day, that did. So anyway, that's Country Walking Magazine. I presume it's the March edition. Have a look, go and buy it. Then you can see us in there. Oh, map's coming out. We're trying to find Foggin Tor Quarry at the moment. Yeah, I think we just go straight over that, that hill in front of us. You see that little faint track? I think we just follow that track over. Oh, well. Keep down there. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently 
looks anything to invite home about this tiny little patch of snow we're walking through. But I'm up to my knees in places. We're cutting across now. We've decided not to keep walking that way because it looks a bit wetter over there. So we thought we'd come in this way, find this track over here, walk up that and then go and find Fogging Tour. and across the moor still. We don't really have a plan today. Just thought we'd get out whilst we could, see if we can catch the end of the snow, which we have. Just enjoy ourselves, really. I think that's the thing about Dartmoor. I think, in spite of what our videos might portray, it doesn't always have to be, you know, a massive, important adventure with overnight wild camping and survival skills. The packs today are pretty much useless. I mean, the only thing I've used my pack for so far is uh, carrying my tripod considering I've got my tarp and my sleeping bag in there might be considered a little bit of overkill. You know, it's just is what you make of it, isn't it? You know, as long as you've got some waterproof trousers, some decent boots and a jacket, just get out there and enjoy it. You know, grab a thermos, get out there and go have some fun, you know, go see some shit. Here we come now, fogging tours over that's here. Great yeah, that's great miss there. And then little miss was halfway down in front of me. Yeah, it is. So uh, yeah, fogging tour quarry now, just over here. Make like that swell tour. That's King's tour over there. That's where we've done our accent training, wasn't it? <laughs> Cox tour, great staple, little staple, middle staple. We didn't do little staple, did we? Rippon tour? Rippon's over the back somewhere. Yeah, and so was Did Cox. we go off somewhere for a, a standing stone? We didn't go off hunting for cops, no. no. <laughs> 